All right, on this channel, you've seen me review manga, you've seen me analyze webtoons, and if it wasn't already clear that I still only read books with pictures in them at my grown age, today for the first time, we're looking at a comic book, The Many Deaths of Layla Starr. The story begins in an office somewhere in the sky. Every worker in this office is some type of god, and the god Ist you follow most closely in the story is, of course, Death, the one in charge of extracting souls from living beings on Earth. You learn that this goddess of death was called in for an emergency meeting meeting for the first time in eternity and turns out <laughs> They're firing her. How can you fire death? She has one of the most important jobs on earth, right? Well, maybe not anymore. Let's read the synopsis. The Many Deaths of Layla Star is a story about humanity being on the verge of discovering immortality. As a result, the Avatar, or Goddess of Death, is fired from her job and cast down to earth to live a mortal life in Mumbai as 20-something year old Layla Star. Struggling with her newfound mortality, Layla has found a way to be dropped in the time and place where the creator of immortality will be be born. You can see that it's already an interesting story since you want to find out if the goddess of death, now Layla Star, will stop the creator of immortality or what would happen if no one died anymore. You can also see why I call it an Indian comic book even though the story was published by a Los Angeles company. Besides the fact that uh, Ram V, one of the two authors of the story, is Indian, there's endless references to Indian and Hindu mythology throughout the story, but most importantly maybe, without realizing it, you inherently acknowledge how big of a role death plays in the human experience. Death is obviously never an easy topic, but I also think that it shouldn't be one that we avoid talking about in fear of sounding too dark or anything like that. I think that to be the only species so consistently conscious of the fact that we won't be here anymore one day implies that if me and you don't actually take the time to understand and talk about this certainty, we forget how to live a fulfilling life. And so it's also no surprise that throughout the ages, different humans have found creative ways to understand or maybe just cope with with death. An idea highlighted throughout the comic book is divided, five issues or chapters, each dealing with how death can be understood differently at various points in a person's life. The first type of death you're introduced to in the story and the first type of death we go through is the death of indifference. As the goddess of death is reborn in the body of Layla Starr, a girl who just passed away in the hospital where the eventual creator of immortality was just born, her first instinct is to find this baby and uh, <laughs> yeah. A wandering ghost in the hospital asks her if she's just gonna kill a baby just because she got fired. To which Lila responds, you think I care? I'm death. I've taken uh, millions mere moments into their lives. This tiny little thing will destroy everything I've ever worked for. The ghost then replies with, you were death, and tells Layla that this eventual creator of immortality, still just a baby, is named Darius. And then something strange happens, Layla isn't able to kill him anymore. She's no longer able to be indifferent to taking the life of a person, as opposed to when she was the immortal goddess of death. After lives aside, it's kind of crazy to realize that the state you were in before you were born is the exact same state you'll be in after you die. It's a state of nothingness, a state of indifference, and through this scene you see that by entering this world, you're no longer in that state anymore. Your birth was a death of its own, a death of indifference. Layla Star was death, figuratively and literally. Again, in that state, she was able to be indifferent to the suffering she brought because she wasn't exactly living in that world. But being forced to be a mortal human being now, she's in now many ways forced to face the happiness and despair that comes with that. We're all forced to face that again as soon as we're born. And you know, Layla would have maybe been forced to face that for a bit longer too if she didn't instantly die again after getting hit by a truck as soon as she left Darius in the hospital. Thankfully, it's then that we're introduced to Pranna, the god of life who throughout the story keeps finding a way to revive Layla. The next time we hear of her, it's to mark the death of innocence. At this point in the story, we've time skipped about 8 years, Darius is now a child beginning to walk through life, and like many kids, Darius's life is lived through a sort of a rosy lens. Everything is new and exciting, until it isn't. He hears news that his family's former house servant, Bardan, just passed. At 8, Darius had begun to understand death, but it had always been a far away myth, and when he heard of Bardan's passing, he wanted to see once again the man upon whose shoulders whole summers had been spent. One day we're here, then the next day we're not. Layla's own innocence shows as she asks a wandering funeral crow near Bardan's funeral why 
why mortals are so preoccupied with death anyways when it's just a natural part of life. The funeral crow answers it's because it's the one thing that is their own. Not death itself, but what you leave behind. To lose your innocence in this sense is to begin acting on that idea. One day you won't be here anymore, but that doesn't mean the same thing as being gone forever. You don't just enter, exist, and leave this world, you can leave your own trace. To be witnessed by someone else and to be remembered when you are gone, these are the things that belong to mortals. Life is then an exercise in making memories. When we next see Darius, he's made quite a few memories. He's a 20 year old now who just got dumped and who just lost his best friend in a fire. I kind of hate stories where a character has a bunch of uh, tragedies happen to them in the name of character development because I feel like uh, depending on how you look at it, for an average person, an average person in reality, the amount of good and unfortunate things that happens always kind of balances out. But I guess this guy is around death a lot. Like when he meets her again at this random party. At this point, Layla herself is just mindlessly spending her time as a human. No more asking why all the time. You see this happen often in young adults today and maybe since time. A sort of a pessimistic nihilism keeps developing. They've been through too much, they're too young to have the tools to process all of it, and so they don't want to see any more. What's clear is that there's been a sort of death of meaning at this point in their lives. Ritesh Babu's review of Layla Star, which is what inspired the way I structured my own video, refers to the stage as the death of dreams instead, which is highlighted by how Darius's best friend died in a pillow factory where the slogan was, we don't just make pillows, we make dreams. Overall, the era that follows this death of meaning is probably the most disorienting and confusing in a person's life. Chances are you're in it right now, you've realized that you don't know exactly what you're doing or where you're going, and you're kind of just trying to be okay with that. Darius says that it feels like he lost half of himself, but Layla adds that it's more than just that. You're left with less and less each time something in your life leaves. You're left with something more precious to be savored like a cigarette. She then says, uh, the point of life, my friend, is to be smoked, which is a quote that uh, stinks of teenage philosophy or R slash I'm 14 and this is deep. When you're in that stage in your life, trying to construct any semblance of meaning is probably what you're supposed to be doing. I'm about to turn 23 now and it kind of feels like that's what I've been doing for the last few years. This is a point in your life where you're trying to find something to hold on to in a world that's not cruel, but careless. What you find to hold on to in this period of your life, whether that's a passion, a fate, or maybe just a group of friends, is how you create your own meaning in a world where that seems to have died. Or in other words, it's how you continue to live. You build on something every single day. And when years later, when even that familiarity you spent years on comes crashing down, you get the death of home and eventually the death of self. I won't go over these last two deaths in the comic book because it really spoils the most consequential parts of the story and I really would like for you to experience them for yourself. I guess these are also uh, two deaths that I don't think I've personally gone through yet so I kind of have a hard time talking about them. But as always these are deaths that are important parts of life. When Layla realizes that people hate her but love Prana, she says you're the god of life. This whole place is an ode to you. To which Prana replies I am nothing without you. Romantic. Tell that the bloody Darius. Will he end up inventing immortality? Looks like by some twisted self-fulfilling prophecy death trying to stop Darius is what started the story. The story's far from perfect though, like it's never really explained why people are still dying when death lost her job. What was she even doing on the job? I guess there's no one to stop people from dying either, but still. None of that takes away from the essence of the many deaths of Layla Star. Just flipping through the pages of the story, the neon art style brings you into a version of Mumbai that you miss as soon as you look outside. Couple that with its imaginative language and the many deaths of Layla Star is a vibe you won't forget soon. A story about death that reminds you that it's death again, that that makes all this beautiful. Like my personal favorite panel was this poem near the end of the story. I whispered to the sea what lies beyond the edge. In gentle waves she said to me, love and mistakes and heartbreaks and victories. I thought I'd put all that behind me. With that I hope 2023 is kind to you and as always I'll see you in the next one. This has been Thoughts from Shivam.